interestingly, now that I've stopped dancing, I feel, I feel even more purposeful. I feel, um, you know, I, yes, I had a dancing career for 20 years, and yes, I, I went to places I just could not have ever dreamt of going, um, dancing with ballerinas, um, that I never dreamt of dancing with. But I feel in, in that 20 years experience, um, I just absorbed things, absorbed those experiences, absorbed the performances, the repertoire. Um, and now, now that I'm not dancing, I have, I think, even more fulfillment out of the art form than I did when I was a dancer. There are things I miss as a dancer, but there's also, I think what, what overrides that is this immense sense of purpose to give to these dancers of the Australian Ballet. Apart from the obvious, which is the experiences that I had as a dancer, which I now you know, sh share those experiences through, my, through the coaching and directing I do within the Australian Ballet. That is the obvious. The other thing that maybe isn't so obvious is actually what you just mentioned, in that, you know, as a small kid, I was really bullied. I was, um, I was, what came so naturally out of me, whether it was my um, lack of social masculinity, whether it was my desire to dance, um, that part of my experience in life actually funnels into this company because what's coming out of me is this is this care and 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 um, desire for these artists to express themselves exactly who they are express um, their true artistic being um, you know this isn't a company under my directorship that's you know regimented you have to get in line and you have to be number three of 15. And, you know, yes, we have a corps de ballet that I'm very proud of, but that's a corps de ballet full of individuals, full of individual artists, and um, full of personalities um, in, the, in this company, which I celebrate and want them to, to have the environment to celebrate in. I, I know and respect where I am in the world, and I... I really want to look at our audiences here in Australia and give them experiences they haven't, that they haven't yet had and give them experiences that they know and love to the absolute highest quality, and that, that being in the classics. People ask me sometimes what sets the Australian Ballet apart from other companies around the world, and I think, well, it sets us, apart from how I feel about the dancers, what sets us apart is the fact that we connect with our audiences here in Australia. And that's through the repertoire. So, you know, we have Nureyev's Don Quixote. We're doing a reconstruction of Anne Williams's Swan Lake, which was in the repertoire decades ago. Um, we just brought Jules into the repertoire. And on the other hand, um, we, we, we are bringing in, um, you know, choreographers that are non-Australian to work with the dancers, to give audiences those experiences but also to nurture Australian choreographers. I think it's so, it would be very easy for me to say, oh, I worked with Ratmansky for a decade. I'm gonna bring in Ratmansky. I, of course, we've brought in Ratmansky and I have, all, I have plans to continue to work with such a genius, but I would be resting on my own, my sole experience as a dancer. And I think as a director, one has to really work on um, developing repertoire, connecting with audiences and the dancers with maybe things that you don't know as well. And for me, that's Australian choreographers. And it's my goal to really nurture Australian choreography and choreographers, as well as the classics, as well as, you know, the greatest of contemporary minds around the world. There was talk of me dancing in that, um, but obviously, Kunstkammer isn't happening. So that idea sort of was quickly um, squelched. I will not put myself in jewels. Uh, those, day, those, days, those days are over. It has a balance of, cl of classicism, but modernity. And I think, yes, it was created in 1967, but it still has this 
freshness of, of step, of, a, of attack, of, of craft, um, and are all, you know, all three emeralds, rubies, diamonds are so different stylistically. And so it's such nourishment and food for the dancer and also nourishment for the audience member. Well, for the gala, you know, because Jules is so specific and it's so, um, it's so important in, its, in and of itself, um, you know, the opportunity of Covent Garden um, cannot be underestimated. And I feel that a return after 35 years to that stage, you know, one of the most famous in the world, um, is an opportunity to show the, the breadth of the company. You know, we don't solely perform um, jewels or the classics. There's work that I've brought in myself. There's work that I've commissioned. There's paradas. And there's another side of the versatility of the company that I wanted to show, that, that the dancers want to show London. And the repertoire um, in the gala um, sh you know, shows a different side of the company. It shows some Australian choreographic voices. It shows um, uh, some repertoire that is well known in London. Um, it also shows uh, some commissions that I've done, um, for example, Pam Tanowitz. So there's, it, it just adds to the story that we're telling when we come to London. You know, it's not just the story of jewels and, and, the, and, the, and the, the, the great story it is choreographically, but it's also, you know, in the gala, we're able to tell a different side of the company. I had this sort of spark of an idea, to be honest, about two years ago. I just felt, you know, Sylvie famously retired in Japan, um, in Bolero. And she's a household name in the dance world. But she wasn't, you know, coaching, as you said. And, and I thought, wouldn't it be so amazing for the dancers to have an artist of that individuality and of that unique um, approach coaching them. And so, you know, Sylvie and I actually didn't really know each other that well in our careers. We never danced together and, and we saw each other on galas at times, but I just asked her and I said, um, you know, we will, we will make it your home if you come. You know, I, we will open our, we'll open our arms widely um, she has had a close connection to Australia throughout her career. Um, our head physio, Sue Mays, was her physio on tours in her career. And um, she, you know, she danced with the Australian Ballet. And so she really loved Australians and has good friends that live here in Australia. So uh, she said yes. And, and she came down and she coached. Don Quixote, at first just the principals, but then as time passed, she ended up coaching every character on stage. And she just brought absolute artistry out of everyone, but, but honest intention of character interpretation, exactly how she approached her characters and her roles in her career. It was never approach of, I did it this way, do it this way. It was never an approach of that's the way the choreography is. She was always asking why, you know, why are you, that doesn't make sense to me. Why are you doing it that, like that? That he's over there when she's, when she's over there, your reaction doesn't make sense to, it was all about reaction and character and, and energy. It had nothing to do with pirouettes, with the height of the leg, with the foot, with the, with the technique. She said, they're already good dancers. They don't need to work on technique. It was so beneficial for everybody. Do you know, I find stylistically it's, it's quite holistic in a way. That, you know, the dancers are, are, are really versatile. Um, they're not, um, they aren't sort of pigeonholed in a certain stylistic um, technique or quality. So I find the dancers to be quite holistic in that like they can, you know, execute classical work, but then they can also like express themselves um, 
through contemporary movement very, very well. But what I do find um, to be a sort of um, unified approach is just their energy on stage. And it has much to do with the school, but it also has much to do with the culture of Australia. I find that there's a warmth on stage. There's a humanness. And um, whereas parts around, other parts around the world, other companies around the world, have this very ethereal kind of um, um, superhuman um, quality that makes them these supreme beings in a way. In Australia, at the Australian Ballet, there are people on stage. There's warmth. There's a humanness. Um, which, as I'm learning as I live here, is very Australian. You know, the Australian warmth is very famous around the world, and I think that's what's um, embodied on stage. It is intense, and, you know, the sheer number of performances here uh, is, is, is very intense. You know, when we're at the Sydney Opera House, um, we do, you know, 21 shows of, of any given ballet. So Don, Don Quixote was, we did 19 shows of Don Quixote consecutively, and then we do 12 shows in Melbourne. And when all is said and done at the end of this year, um, when we open Swan Lake, we, we open it in Melbourne, but then we take it to Adelaide and Brisbane and then to Sydney, we will have done 63 Swan Lakes at that stage. So the workload is really intense. We're closing up 24. It, it hasn't been announced yet, but I'm really looking at, um, um, as I said, a mix of uh, choreographers that haven't yet really worked within the company um, internationally. I think that's really important for the dancers and also audiences to have these new experiences. Um, and again, with the classics, I, I really feel, and this goes into our 2024 season and onwards, uh, the classics have to be performed to their absolute highest standard, not only in terms of dancing, but in terms of the production. I've done many a production that looked you know, dusty and, and like a museum piece in my career, the Swan Lakes, the Giselles, um, you know, tested through and through. But part of the vision here is to, when we do, like we did Rudolf Nureyev's Don Quixote, we did a complete refurbishment of set. And we, you know, we, we made um, the production look as absolutely fresh as it possibly can. And so going into the future, longer term, it will be you know, these major commissions from contemporary choreographers, but also the classics done to their, to their absolute highest standard. You know, we're, we're finalizing some up, nothing that is really solidified and ready to announce. But the idea is that we tour internationally every year. I think it's so important for a company you know, of where we are in the world that we, we get to the major cities um, we, you know, we're seen not only in London, but we're seen in North America, and we're seen in Asia, um, and that's sort of what's being worked on at this stage.